Hey, Killjoys. Um, Sam here. Zero gravity, whatever you want to call me. Uh, this week we're supposed to talk our we're supposed to talk about our family and our experiences. So I guess I'll begin with um, my mom. My mom likes MCR, but when I remember I was making my wish list for like Christmas or something. She, uh, I wrote down all the albums because I didn't have the majority of them. I only had, like, Black Parade, I think, at the time. And she, like, my parents were, like, freaking out. They're like, what? You brought me your bullets. I brought you my love or something like that. And they're like, three cheers just for revenge? What is this? And they were against it. Then I got it. And I, well, I went to a bunch of speech contests and stuff. And normally when it's something like that and I win first place, what happens is, um... They're like, oh, you can bring whatever you want into the car. We'll, like, listen to any CD. And I'm like, yeah, my cam. It'll get me pumped up for my Japanese. Right? And so we listened to that. My mom's like, oh, this is nice. So I pump up Danger Days, and she loved that. My dad, not so much. He, um, I remember one time they were playing The Blackbird is Dead, like, the concert on TV, and I didn't have the DVD or anything yet. I mean, now I do, but... And then uh, I was like, is it taping? Is it taping? Is it taping? Then he went, he's like going to go check for me and stuff like that. And he's like, he sat, apparently he sat there before I was even in the room. He watched the recording, watched it through the first two songs, being the end and dead. And he's like, what is this? And I was like, oh, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. I want to listen to this one song, this one song. And so we kept going and going. He's like, you better not be doing what they're doing on here, what they're saying to do. And I'm like, dad, I don't take it literally, literally. I mean, yeah, I pay attention to the lyrics and stuff. I know what it means, but not like that. My sister, I do have a younger sister. She's 13. She, as every sibling is, annoying. Just very annoying. Gets on my nerves all the time because I'm the oldest sibling, which kind of stinks. And she has a weird relationship with my chem. I mean, one moment she'll be like, yeah, this is awesome, right? She's an obsession with Frank, I think. That whenever I mention anything to her, she's like, anyway, I guess that's it for my family. I'm happy to say I'm going to a concert with my mom, although she's making me wear earplugs, which makes me kind of sad because I'm not going to be able to listen to them completely full blast because I'll have earplugs. And now I'm all like, hey, well, at least I can be just like the band because they're wearing earplugs too, right? Okay, as for experiences, this is going to cover about seven different things, which I have to cram to in about eight minutes, maybe. Okay, so I'll begin with after fifth grade, when I was going into middle school. This is a life-changing thing that happened to me. I had all these friends in elementary school, and if you've seen Life on the Murder Scene, Gerard is correct. Middle school, I, I, just my personal thought, it is the worst like school period ever. Some people think it's high school, but I think it's middle school. Because you're just going there and literally you lose like a majority of your friends because it is all about popularity. I lost, like I was one of the tomboys so I was friends with all the guys and then all their friends would joke about us like dating and the and all that. And so what happened was I lost the majority of my friends. The next year in 7th grade I had made one friend, only one friend, I had one friend named Tomas and he was in my um remedial reading class because I had passed our big test the year before to get in the next grade so I had to take that class where I met him and as you watched before my first video he was the one who was um introduced me to my chem but I never really listened to them at the time I was just too much of an anime geek nerd in seventh grade I found out I had to go through surgery for scoliosis we'd known I had scoliosis since I was about nine and I was just about to turn 13, and my surgery was scheduled for the day right after my birthday. Unlike going in for a foot surgery or something, when you have scoliosis, it takes a long time for like the process to heal and stuff. I remember I was in the hospital for a week, and the surgery didn't bother me very much. I had to give like two bags of blood ahead of time, wasn't allowed to get sick, missed two and a half months of school. And none of my friends would contact me. I didn't, like, really talk to anybody. I was kind of in solitude. It was pretty bad. I didn't like it. And then on top of that, apparently, like, the week right before my surgery, or right a couple days right before, we found out I was moving to Texas to top it off. 
And so we had never been to Texas. We knew nobody. We only knew like a couple people from our old neighbors when we lived in Virginia. Because we moved around a lot from like San Diego to Virginia to Florida to Texas now. But so we moved to Texas. And at first I was all like, oh great, this is Texas. So many, when they say like everything in Texas, it's bigger. So much bigger. And I'm like, the anime conventions must be huge then. I went for spring break, and I was cooped up in a bed for about, like, just in my house. I couldn't go to school, didn't do anything. I mean, I went to school on the phone or something online, but couldn't really talk to anybody. And so the we drove to Texas from South Florida, and I thought it was, like, the best thing ever, and I was still recovering from my surgery. And my mom and my sister were, like, so tired and so much pain, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm outside, there are trees, it was the best thing ever. But when we got there, I went to an anime convention, Anime Matsuri, and I'm like, this isn't as good as it is in Florida. And then I find out that I can only probably go to about maybe one or two a year. Back in Florida, it was like one every single other month or something like that. They were bigger to me, and I enjoyed them more, because I guess I had a lot more friends. Well, actually, I had less friends to go with, but yeah. Anyway, so then... uh. After moving to Texas, I started crawling into a shell, coming kind of depressed because I didn't know anybody my age, and I moved from a time where all I could talk about literally 24-7 anime, I didn't know how to talk about anything else, like how the weather was, I didn't really listen to any music except for Japanese music, anime music, J-pop and all that, so that was the only thing I listened to at the time. And... So I couldn't really open up a conversation about Lady Gaga. Didn't really go on the computer so much. Because I, like, on caveman technology is what I have. I had to get texting in order to have friends. Because, um, nobody could pick up the phone and just call somebody and talk. Or, let hey, let's go to the movies. Or, hey, want to come over? We had to, um... Well, it's, it's just really, it really sucked. Because... I had to have all this technology and stuff that I didn't have. I remember one of the first days of school, I got on the bus and I had my little MP3 player, which I do not have with me right now. But um, it was like it was this big. It was a Sansa player, and I still have it. And I didn't have an iPod. I don't have an iPod. I don't have an iTouch. I don't have an iPad or whatever. I don't have an i anything basically. So I'm behind the times, but. I couldn't talk to anybody, and then all of a sudden, just like moving there, losing a couple of friends. I just started making friends too in Florida, and everything that I had gone through, it just felt the worst. I just went through a lot of shit at that time, I guess, and it just got to me. But um, I guess later on, I remember my friend. He liked my chem. And I heard they were a good band to listen to when you're down or something like that because they were an emo band. I was really feeling emo and I really didn't know what it was at the time. Just like, cutting yourself, you should listen to this, it might help. So I did and it actually pulled me up out of my ditch and it helped me tremendously. So, yeah. I guess that's all I can really say. They helped me a lot and here I am now and I'm completely great. I have a couple marks on my wrist, but that was from surgery, a lot of needles and stuff, and because of that, I now have a fear of needles because they put so many in me, it just freaks me out now, I can't, can't deal with it. So I guess that's it for this week, that's all I can really say about myself, my experiences, and I hope to see you next week, Killjoys. See you then. I gave you blood, blood, gallons of the stuff I gave you all that you can drink and it has never been enough. I gave you blood, blood, blood.